I think that, that uh, really critical thinking demystified approach to, to the history of, of conflict and to the protagonists of, of, of the conflict on both sides, on both sides of the, of, of the conflict, of, of the divide, is crucial, is crucial for whoever wants to, to understand conflict, to go deeper into the reasons of, uh, of, of conflicts, uh, of, uh, of outbreak of conflicts, etc., to the ways conflicts are being handled and perceived and understood and told and retold, etc., how they are instrumentalized by their respective societies, by the different sides to the conflict, etc. So to, to, to come to the topic uh, as much as possible, because we are all products of our national education, we are all, in a way, nationals, and to some extent, even uh, nationalist. We, 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 we bear within us our upbringing, our, our native landscape, our cultural language, etc. In spite of ourselves, we are nationals. So, in a way, you have to get rid of your own shortcomings as a nationalist product, uh, you have to, to, uh, to approach the conflict and the different uh, protagonists of the conflict, etc., with clear eyes and with, with sound mind and very critically and in a political way, political in the sense that Hannah Arendt uh, gives to, to to this uh, term. I would like to, to bring you another quote, a brilliant quote by, by Hannah Arendt, which goes into the question, into the issue of victimhood and victims. She writes in a, in a private letter to Karl Jaspers. You know that Karl Jaspers, the anti-Nazi philosopher, German philosopher, he was her uh, her mentor and supervisor, doctorate uh, supervisor, uh, and they became friends while she was a student. Not I, not to to mix up with uh, Martin Heidegger. This is a completely different other story. She writes to Jaspers uh, in uh, in the autumn of 1946 when the Nuremberg trials uh, began and she started to, to, to watch them. Uh, she, write, she, wrote, she wrote something really impressive. She said that, you know, on the, on the rampa to the, to, the, to the gas chambers, everybody, even the scoundrels, even the corrupted, everybody was utterly innocent, completely and absolutely innocent, representing absolute innocence in face of the gas chambers. One was innocent. But the fact that uh, the Germans are so guilty has created an absolute innocence, which means that the victims of this uh, this genocide are absolute utter victims and she says politics political world human ro world cannot live with such uh, uh, and cannot face and cannot handle such victimhood absolute victimhood because absolute victimhood which perpetuates itself and which which perceives its, uh, itself as an essentialized victimhood and also a forever victimhood means that the other side is forever absolute 
guilty, absolutely guilty, absolutely uh, uh, criminal, etc. And this divide between absolutes is impossible to handle. I think that we are, in a way, experiencing what experiencing what she has foreseen so early in the process already in 1946. And I think that, uh, you know, to handle conflicts, to uh, manage conflicts while taking oneself as the absolute victims, while the other is the absolute criminal and the absolute demon and the absolute murderer, etc. First of all, it cannot be true. It cannot be exact because reality is not that, that way. Politics is not about absolutes. Politics of absolutes becomes messianism. Usually in conflict and in politics, the shades of gray and ambiguities and uh, paradoxes and complexities, because history is about complexities, and history is about ambiguities, not about absolute truth. Never about uh, absolute truth. It's really a question of perspectives, etc. One has to be open to other voices and to other truth and to, to, to other perspectives in order not to be of the UN, you know, an envoy of the UN, but in order to understand the deeper motivations and forces active beneath the surface of conflicts.